Hello once again and a very warm welcome to part two of this tutorial about producing a worm gear mechanism. Now what we've got is our gear and of course our top gear here that we're going to be using the worm gear to move and we've got it attached to a shaft which will be driven by the, the cog there. Okay so what we'll do, take a quick look at this in our side view. Now the worm gear here has 20 turns and the top gear here 31 teeth. So we've got an even number and an odd number but don't worry it works absolutely fine. In order to make this work it's quite a simple ratio that we need to worry about. Now when we turn the worm gear through 360 degrees basically what we need to happen is for this to move by one tooth. One tooth needs to travel. So it basically is 360 divided by 31. And if we get the calculator out, we can say 360 divided by 31 is 11.61. We don't need to worry. 11.612 if we want to be really accurate. We'll go down to the nearest thousandth, so we'll say 11.612. So in order to achieve this, it's really very, very simple. We just need three Expresso nodes. It's that simple. So if we get hold of our Expresso window here, just open that. We want our gear, which will be last in the chain, our worm gear, which is going to be first. Now, we need to just ascertain what we're doing here. So we should just move this out of the way a little bit. We're going to rotate it in a positive direction. As you can see, it's starting to move that way. So we're going to go in a positive direction and it's rotation B that we're interesting, interested, interested in. So it's the banking. So for a start, we can go to coordinates, rotation, rotation B. That's our first port of call. Moving on from here, we'll just check what our gear is going to be doing. So our gear, yes, once again, it's going to be rotation B and it will move again in a positive direction. So again, we can put that in there, coordinates, rotation, rotation B, and that's the two objects sorted out. Finally, we just need our old friend, the range mapper, and we can wire the rotation B straight in there. Now in here I'm going to set our input range to degree and the same with our output range. It just makes life a lot easier. The input lower and upper values will be naught and 360 because we want to use one turn of the worm gear and we said that it was going to be 11.661. I think it was 612. I'll double check. <laughs> Let's just get that calculator out again. 360 divided by 31. Yes, yeah, 612. Okay. So we put our 612 in there and we've got that sorted out and then we can wire this into there and then check that everything's working. So if we just grab a hold of our rotation B on the worm gear and move it, you can see that it's going to work absolutely perfectly. And that's how you that's how you create a worm gear mechanism. It's a very, very simple formula, as I said. Nothing complicated about this whatsoever. So if we go back into our 3D view here, what we'll do, quick little bit of animation, we'll just set that back to zero. Record at that point, move through to 90 frames, and then let's make this, I don't know. It will go 3,600, shall we? Do it 10 times and then record that there. Okay, let's see what we get. Yeah, it's fine. Works absolutely fine. I mean, all right, there's a, there's a break in it, but that doesn't matter. I mean, if you wanted to be really clever about it, you can work it out so that it loops perfectly. But for our purposes here, it shows us what we want to do. So there you have it. We'll just click on there so we don't see our coordinates. There you go. Perfect. And that's how you create a worm gear mechanism. It's very, very simple indeed. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you very, very soon on the next one.